artist today. We've got the Gentle Giants here with us. Can you guys just give us a wave? Gentle Giants. Um, we've got uh, Professor Alice Fox who's here with us today. And we've got um, Amos Menlangit here today. And here's our program for today. Um, first up, I'm Joel David from um, Aesthetic. I'm going to start off by telling us a little bit about inclusivity and co-creation. Um, and next we'll have Amos Menlangit, who is an artist, a special needs educator, and also a disability advocate. And he'll be sharing with us about some of the programs that he and his group of very special artists have been doing together during the pandemic. And then afterwards, we'll have um, Professor Alice Fox from Brighton University, who's pioneered the world's first inclusive arts master's degree uh, program and so that will be the end of the formal segment of our program and the second half of our program will then be an open conversation section so obviously we've got a very special group of artists the gentle giants artists here today uh, we've also got loads of artists from around the world so we're really looking forward to hearing from all of you guys later during the open open conversation section Okay, um, so I thought I'd begin, hold on, I thought I'd begin by introducing to you guys uh, what we're doing here. Um, so basically, I'm from Aesthetic and we were an art business that operated for the last in New Delhi in India. And so all these um, artworks you can see behind me and this one here in the slide, um, basically, we, we, we were selling them for the past three decades and um, these, all these artworks are part of the collection. Um, but one thing I noticed about the art, art industry is, you know, it, it tends to be quite exclusive. So um, I actually, um, I did my, my education in Oxford and Edinburgh where I did uh, literature and art. And when I kind of looked around, I noticed it tends to be quite an exclusive, uh, it's quite an exclusive sort of environment um, and art seems to be appealing or catering to quite a limited um, group of people whilst excluding some other, other types of people, um, which of course should not be the case at all. You know, art shouldn't be a luxury for few, few people. It should be, you know, it's basic right for everybody. Um, so that's why, um, here at Aesthetic, we are, yeah, we've decided we want to transform fine art. We want to make it accessible to, to everyone. We want to make it into something that's practical, that's wearable. We're making it into streetwear, into um, urban wear, anything that's a little bit more practical to people. Um, and one of our really exciting upcoming projects we've got is co-creating. Co where uh, we've got Jisha Elizabeth. I think she's here today. Can you give us all a shout, uh, Jisha? Hello, everyone. It's nice Hello. to be here. Hello. Um, so Jisha is our abstract artist and fashion designer, and um, she's going to be working with the special group of artists, the Gentle Giants. Can you guys give us a wave? Hello. Hey. Um, yeah, so they're going to be working together and transforming the beautiful pieces of art into wearable art and um, later Amos is going to share with you guys that um, at the heart of inclusivity is co-creation you know we're crossing national boundaries we're crossing cultural differences we're working together as an inclusive global community and that that's what we hope to achieve and um, so I'm really excited to announce to you guys this upcoming project inclusive fashion and um, it's going to be coming to you guys this Christmas um, you'll get to see the artwork from our very special um, team of artists uh, being made into wearable art. And um, so that's enough from me now. Um, I'm going to invite Amos to, de to deliver his presentation. Um, so Amos is an artist and educator who has engaged extensively in developing uh, creative programs for those with special needs. He has advocated for disability rights and has been a part of the Art for Good Fellowship that works towards creating uh, social change through the arts. 
Um, he's also worked alongside the British Council to promote inclusive art initiatives around Asia, and he's currently working um, as a lecturer at the Fine Arts um, Department at the University of Philippines. So um, let's welcome Amos Menlangit. Thank you very much, Joel, and good up and good day, everyone, whichever time zone we are in. So mabuhay, and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, mabuhay, in our language, means to get alive. And I feel like all the liveliness of the world is in this virtual room right now. First, I would like to thank everyone for making time. We are on basically eight different time zones today, the Philippines and Singapore, Australia, Japan, India, Gentle Giants are Diko, Roel. Hello. Uh, just say, just, just say hello, okay? All right. Okay. And so, Mackie, Daniel, Alwin, Andrea, Bodong, Rupert, and Ralph. Well, the gentle giants come from a diverse range of talented artists <laughs> different creative angles. They are pianists. Actually, they are pianists. They are singers and visual artists who have been developing their craft even before the pandemic. However, the story took an alternate route when this year came. And we all didn't expect that we will be embarking on this particular project called Creative Journaling. That became our beautiful intersection. It was very simple, but it was not just a time filler for us because through journaling, it turned out that we share the same objectives for coming together to this activity. First, it was a response to the situation that we did not see, the pandemic, which has driven us to stay at home and limit our in-person activities. We all need a medium to process what's happening within and around us, and we found drawing as a valuable companion to share our thoughts and feelings. At the start, it was a difficult process considering the online engagement, and it had limits in terms of socializing and connecting with each other. But we wanted to do it because the COVID-19 pandemic was getting to us in all ways. Let me share with you how it started. It started basically with family because one of the artists, who is a cousin of mine, his family experienced a COVID-related situation in the family. And his mom, Emma, and I talked about it and wanted to give Alwin an opportunity to process his thoughts and feelings at this time of uncertainty. So in the first month, we were doing it together. That was basically the uh, third week of March until the first week of April, when the lockdown was just, I think, a few weeks uh, into its implementation. But eventually, we worked with a group for it. And we later realized that we had individual experiences of the lockdown that are actually shared. First, it was the first time in our lifetimes, and hopefully the last one, that, that this kind of lockdown happened. Second is that in my country, the Philippines, we had the longest lockdown in the world because it happened in a series of waves and we're still actually on a partial lockdown until now. Mall and parts are empty and cases are still on the rise on this side of the world. And this uncertainty was bringing out all our anxieties. We needed some self-affirmation on how we can sustain ourselves in light of the prolonged physical and social restrictions. So to art, what topics, topics did we explore? First, even when we were on the screens, we're talking about the world. We were listening to music like a whole new world, no? in which you can see in this artwork no? that we had an idea of all of our travels uh, and we were doing it virtually, even if we were staying at home. It was a beautiful experience for me to work with them and see the world through their eyes. Also, we talked about the future. I was asking them, do you think that there will still be face masks and people with their face will still use facials in the future? And it was interesting to see that they, they had a very dynamic view of the future. Some said that there will still be some health issues and some said that people can actually talk face to face like before. 
we also talked about COVID-19 head on because that was something that was a new experience for us. So, of course, the symbol of the face mask, one of the most defining symbols of our time. You can see it um, through their eyes, no? And of course, this new normal that we're calling, what would it be like? What are, let's say, for example, this work uh, and so shows the curfews, shows what happens to the, to the physical environment. And they wanted to express this to art. But of course, the pandemic also had its good points, such as the increased accessibility and increased connectivity, to which today is really a testament of. And of course, we talked about social issues that were surrounding us, issues that are timeless like uh, disability rights. We also talked about family, we talked about friends, basically everything that would keep us expressing what is in our mind. And of course, the mo most importantly are the feelings because there were actually some moments in our workshops where in every other 15 days, uh, the president of our country would, would say that we are still in lockdown or he would decide that the lockdown would end. We don't really know what was happening and that was creating a lot of negative feelings, making us vulnerable to negative feelings. And we had to show it to art, happiness, sadness. That was very okay to show these kinds of things. But eventually, uh, we found a way to collaborate further through them sharing with each other in the screen. Because what we did was that we tried to put in the art together to make one hybrid work, just like what we see now. Like puzzles, we did so puzzle pieces from our, from our places and then we put them together to create one collaborative work. And we even made our vision of a village like this. What, kind of village you will want to live in in the future, which is basically the vision of the foundation we're in. Well, collaborative art somehow addresses the social need in various ways, as the artists see their works juxtaposed with another's words, and that connects them. When I did my study about wellness in persons with disabilities from a master's program in the university, my respondent parents saw that the social aspect is the most crucial wellness dimension. We cannot lose it, or we're done. And through art, we found a way. I witnessed how art played a part here, and that is in three ways. First is the third expressive and therapeutic impact, in which there was power to communicate and to share what we feel, which makes us feel better. It has become our companion for everything that has happened from us as early as April of this year. Second is talent development, in which we realize the importance of co-creation and, co -colla and collaboration by staying on the screen together to share ideas, styles, techniques, and enhance our art in the process. Curation can bring out the real context of the works and add more excitement on how the material is being shared to everyone. And this is basically how Alice and her team would de describe inclusive arts. And they define it as a creative collaboration between learning disabled and non-learning disabled artists, resulting to high quality artworks and creative experiences, emphasized in communication, exchange, relationships, and the creative talent of its collaborators. And third is advocacy building aspect, because inclusive art goes way back from the disability arts movement in the 60s, when art was recognized as a powerful exercise of their rights and a call to action for society to open up to diversity and inclusion. When it comes to the art and the pandemic, we see the essential role of the arts to people in general at this period of our lives. First, as I mentioned, it becomes an exercise of our cultural rights to contribute to the unfolding arts of the pandemic. It art making creates testimonies of a significant period of world history that happens once in multiple lifetimes. This is similar to how artists interpreted the Spanish flu of 1918, which is now an evidence of the sentiments of their time. And the art sector is a part of society that needs to be heard and supported in whichever way. Do you believe that? I do believe that. Whether economic, psychological, or whichever way to support the arts artist community. But since the pandemic is an ongoing thing, we can only see so far because we never know when it will end. So we can use virtual technology as a leverage to communicate more and increase our tribe, right? And you know, one of the beautiful outputs of this project is to become an online hub for inclusive arts through www.inclusivearsinitiative.com, which started out as a virtual exhibit space, but would now like to help connect 
for our practices and activities together. If you're going to navigate the website, you can see five tabs there about showcase partners, resources, and what's happening, to which you can see the words of the Gentle Giants artists on the showcase section. But of course, there is also a, uh, there is a need for us to define inclusive arts, which is why I'm very thankful that Alice is with us, Professor Alice, because she is actually helping us institutionalize this practice by placing the first master's in inclusive arts program in the world. Of course, we also have our partners have been carrying this all throughout. And of course, um, I, before this event, you know, I actually talked with a lot of my co-artists that I met from different parts of the world, and they are now part of the resources section. And I'm very, very thankful that you are actually using the website you know, to be able to share about your practice. But there's more. You know, we can, I can would still like to invite you to participate by, of course, featuring your artists and your works and becoming a partner, perhaps, like a mileage partner in any way. And of course, becoming an, a resource because, you know, um, artists in Southeast Asia and Asia, based on, uh, based on my travels around the world, actually, we also, we needed to connect with the pioneers of inclusive arts practice in the UK. And this is, I hope, one of those opportunities to share the same platform. And this is actually um, derived from my vision as I, when I went to the UK last this year, through, through my, the Connections to Culture Mobility Grant Project, in which I met about 14 organizations. A lot of them are here today uh, across the UK to share about their practice. And for me, as a Filipino and a Southeast Asian, to also share about my practice. And I think that it goes a long way back because even before this, there have been a number of uh, very important conferences that occurred this in the world. First is the Arts and Disability International Conference, which happened in Singapore in 2018, which I was able to attend, and the organized the True Colors Festival, which is basically a glitzy and a glittering uh, showcase of, of artists from around the world. And of course, a somehow, you know, a yearly gathering, an international gathering of artists, you know, all the way from different parts of the world to come to India, of course, under the guidance of Guru Alpanalaya, who's with us today. And that is a very, 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 very beautiful experience I had in 2018. The Arts for Good Fellowship of Singapore was actually an instrument for us to connect as artists doing social good from around the world. And I think that is the reason why Singapore is very, very much active in the inclusive arts uh, advocacy. And the International Expressive Arts Therapy Association, more on the therapy side, but they had their um, their conference in Hong Kong in 2015, the 11th. It's actually based, this is based in the US, but they go around the world to hold conferences. And these were the experiences I had that helped me also to know more about inclusive arts practice, which I now wish to share with you. And I think uh, my co-speakers would want to. So this event is actually carried by so many organizations and I'm very thankful a lot of them are here today. Of course, Astaletic, Joel, um, uh, British, the British Council, the Philippines office in particular, the Singapore International Foundation, the National Council on Disability Affairs of the Philippines, the Boundless Possibilities Foundation, the Rotary Club of Kansas City in the Philippines, the Museum of History of Ideas from the University of the Philippines, the Federation of Philippine Photographers Foundation, the Center for Women's and Gender Studies also from the University of the Philippines, the Expressive Arts Philippines, um, Northville Foundation and the Magistrate of Spaces. And actually, this is a caravan, so uh, there will be a special focus on the intersections with art education in another forum scheduled September 5, that is 9.30 a.m. Manila, Singapore time. So with that, I'd like to take this further by inviting you also to join the Facebook group Inclusive Arts Initiative. You know, there's so many beautiful inclusive arts networks that I found you know, in, on Facebook, and I hope that this is this leverage of online technology can help us connect more on a bigger platform, right? So thank you very much and uh, I'll take it away. Take it away, Joel. <laughs> thank you, Amos, for that incredibly um, fascinating presentation. Um, let me just switch the slides. Um, Great. And uh, next up, we've got Professor Alice Fox, um, who is going to present to us about 
um, Inclusive Arts. So she is the deputy head of the School of Art at the University of Brighton and is the founder of the pioneering Masters of Inclusive Art practice. Um, she's also artistic director of Learning Disabled Rocket Artists Group and has delivered inclusive art projects for the National Gallery and the British Council in many countries around Asia. So for this excellent work, she's won the Times Higher Education Award for Excellence and Innovation in the Arts. And um, so let's welcome Professor Alice Fox, please. Hi everyone, an absolute privilege to be here. I'm just going to be sharing my screen with you. I'm just going to do a, a 10 minute whiz through really um, about inclusive arts. And, and it's so fantastic to have people here from so many countries and, uh, and there's a real interest in this subject at the moment. Um, and just to say that um, in the true spirit of inclusive arts, when we were wondering exactly what is it um, in order to write the book that you're you're looking at here we went around the world and talked to over 130 um, practitioners and 50 different arts organizations just and we then we ran a symposium just to try and work out together um, who'd been doing what and and what what was inclusive arts and what what are the principles of inclusive arts so in the next 10 minutes I'm just going to kind of give you a whiz through um, a definition of inclusive arts, um, some of the principles of inclusive arts, but then what's the effect of the pandemic, pandemic going to have on inclusive arts and what might the next steps be? Because one of the fantastic thing about inclusive arts and any kind of definition is it's constantly changing because we work with many different people and, we, um, and it's not separate from society, it's built into society. So as as things change in the world, so does the definition and the use of inclusive arts, which is one of the most fantastic things about it. Um, so at the moment, uh, we're at an absolute um, point where everything's changing um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's exciting, um, but it's also very unsettling. So this is the definition and um, Amos has already mentioned it. Um, so when we say inclusive arts, sometimes that term, it doesn't translate over lots of different um, languages. So really another way of saying that is just art for everyone. Um, you know, we believe that art is a human right that's been mentioned by Joel and Amos already, and everyone should have the opportunity to access that. So it's just art for everyone. So it's supporting people to take part in the creative activities as artists and audiences. So it's access to the creative industries, both as an artist and the skills you might need to do that, but also as an audience member. Um, it's about making good quality art. Sometimes people think that art made by people of excluded groups isn't good quality art, but that's where the fashion product, products are so fantastic because it's showcasing the real quality of, quality of the art on beautiful quality clothing. So that's a, a lovely kind of development. So we're looking at good quality art and we're challenging the perceptions and the prejudice of who can be an artist and who can be a good quality artist. Brilliant thing about inclusive arts, it allows us to have conversations. It's about building relationships. Um, and so it's about having productive conversations and working with each other. In that way, we're kind of building, we're breaking down the different kind of sections of society who's excluded and who's included. And we're having the most inspiring and all of us that do this work know how much we get from it and how, how many inspiring conversations we have. So who is it for? Just to say again, art really should be for everyone. So the five principles of inclusive arts, and like I say, these were sort of developed through conversations. Um, and it might be going forward that we review these or we think maybe we need some more principles during the pandemic. Um, but I think they, they still broadly fit and um, so they're still useful. Um, so it must be mutually beneficial, so good for everyone. So we get away from this idea that, oh, I'm a worthy, lovely person and I'm working with the poor disabled people or the poor refugees or whatever. It's not like that. It's that we're learning and they're learning and everyone's benefiting from coming together. 
and we're creating a kind of cohesive community. So it's good for everyone. And, and as artists and arts practitioners, we need to understand that. Um, it offers opportunities for knowledge and skills. So it's a very much has an educational element for everyone. We're going to understand more about each other and how to make art and art making skills. Um, and, and we're going to see each other's work and we're going to go to galleries and going to look at other work and going to understand things. Um, and that's because quite often the people we work with have an impoverished um, educational experience. Um, so as well as providing opportunities for people to learn, importantly, we're providing opportunities for people to unlearn. And by that we mean relearning or unlearning all the things we thought we knew about people who are different to us. So that's about us challenging our own stereotypes, our own conscious bias, and leaving those at the door when we're working with people. Um, it's a platform for experiences and voice and ambition. I mean, it's exactly all of these are embodied in the Gentle Giants fantastic project. Um, you know, what a fantastic platform we've got here today to hear the really important experiences and ideas for the futures around, around the lockdown. Um, high quality artworks we've talked about, but also high quality experience. When people are, when we're working with people together in the room, they need to be having a good quality, good day, and they need to be leaving that art project feeling better about themselves and not worse. So often the people we work with can have quite a sort of difficult time in society. We make sure that when they're with us, it's an absolute quality experience. So when you look at these five principles, you can see that the Gentle Giants project embodies all of these. Um, this is just a photograph from a performance piece we did in Seoul recently. And so it's an example of how we can take our creative ideas and use them in a well-ventilated, socially distanced way and still keep, still keep being together. So the pandemic, um, it's been devastating, but it's also been um, interesting and it's also a reality. So we need to work out how are we operating within it. So what are the challenges and what are the benefits of the pandemic? So there's been a significant psychological challenge, um, negative effects on well-being, lots of fear of the unknown, lots of grieving and lots of feeling unsafe. Um, and in the UK, the government has done some research around this and it says that all of these effects are felt by everyone, but they're more profoundly affect, these effects are felt more profoundly by people with disabilities as the danger um, due to health conditions and mental health and physical health is, is more profound. So there's been a big physical impact. We're no longer to be able to be in the same place and we're no longer able to travel to see each other. Um, and inclusive arts, the bedrock of inclusive arts is building communities and relationships and finding ways through the art to be with each other and pull people out of isolation and come together and make things. Um, so that's, that's been profoundly difficult for inclusive artists. Um, why about that? Ah. Here we are. Uh, another big challenge is the digital divide. So there are statistics that show us that many of the world's excluded people are also the same people that may not have digital equipment, digital technology, or any kind of digital education. So we don't have, not everyone has access to that. There's a huge financial impact, isn't there? There's a global crisis in general, and also that's for the arts. So finances around the arts and what are the arts is in, is in an absolute global crisis. Um, so then I think one of the benefits um, is that we now have a new global understanding about what it is to be isolated. We've many, many, many people in the world have had to stay at home during lockdown and feel isolation. And that's not the kind of profound isolation that, that we're, we're talking about when we're working with some of the world's excluded groups, because that's a lifetime of potential isolation. But there is a new understanding 
of the difficulties of isolation through personal experience. And there's a new kind of global effort to work against isolation and build community um, for people that can't leave their homes. And so that's, that's, that's going to generate new ways of working that are even more inclusive. Um, and personally, from the work that we've been doing in the Rocket Artist Studios, there'll be, and at the University of Brighton, there'll be some new things that we've been doing that will continue whether COVID-19 is here or not, because they're better, um, they're better and they're more inclusive. So what are the new spaces for exchange? Well, they're, they're broadly, broadly two. There's online, there's the online space, which we're all in now, which is so, which is so exciting, actually, you know, people from eight different countries and, uh, sorry, eight different time zones. Um, and I haven't, I'm still in my lounge and that feels amazing. I haven't had to get on an aeroplane and fly for 17 hours, nor has anyone else. Um, so there's online. So what can we do online? We can actually do live events online like this, where you can feel like part of a community. We can do live yeah. teaching online. Uh, and we can do new online courses that don't require um, anyone to be together at the same time. There have been globally lots of online exhibitions and performances that have amazing kind of creative solutions to all of this. And importantly, online socials. Um, Amos was saying that the social aspect of well-being is absolutely key. So we can do online socials, um, video conversations and, and tutorials. Uh, but then what do the physical activities look like these days? Well, uh, we're just developing socially distant studios. So when lockdown slightly lifts, um, we can be together, but at a distance. And you could do socially distant performances or, or you know, you can, we can be together, but at a distance. Uh, Rockets have been, well, lots of people have been receiving food parcels during lockdown. So we decided that as we're artists, we could send people art parcels so we've been doing art pack deliveries that arrive on people's doorsteps and um, with art materials and activities to do uh, we can just pick up the phone and have a phone conversation with some of the artists that we work with just as a check-in um, and then we've, doing we've been doing digital technology training for carers and um, for the artists and we've been sending out ipads and going and training carers so that there can be some support try and bridge that gap between the digital divide and then there's the good old postal service we've been posting each other parcels and artworks um, and I was asking some friends of mine so there's been lots of innovation some friends of mine in, in East Asia what they've been doing so I talked to superhero me in Singapore they've been doing a project called dear doctor where they've been giving advice and support to caregivers um, they've been doing artist ed workshops, storytelling, exercises and performances online. And they've built an educational resource pack for people with learning disabilities about how to fight and keep safe from, from COVID-19. Um, in Myanmar, the British Council, uh, Lin, he's been using Facebook to in engage local communities. They've done a video series, um, they've done some poetry and working with local artists. And there's a punk band in uh, Myanmar that's been done a project called Food Not Bombs, where they've been taking out food parcels to people who are living on the streets during the pandemic. Um, in Vietnam, the British Council has been doing, um, I've, I've written an inclusive arts short course for them and 1500 people have taken the short inclusive arts online course. Um, and then, of course, in the Philippines, we've got the Gentle Giants and the amazing work that Amos has been doing. So that doesn't cover it. Uh, of course, there are many, many things going on in the UK and around the world uh, that are new creative responses to this pandemic. So um, just to flag up for anyone who might be interested, as I mentioned, there's the Arts for Everyone um, Introduction to Inclusive Arts. The British Council are doing a totally online course um, written by me. Um, 
but you can do it in Vietnamese and in English. And then the MA Inclusive Arts at the University of Brighton for the first time ever has gone, you can take a totally online option um, or you can come in and be socially distanced with us. So there are, there are many kind of quick pivots. So next steps. So, so my feeling is where we want to get to is one interconnected human community not people that are separated or excluded, but one community where everyone is welcome and all differences are embraced. So what are the next steps? As inclusive artists and artists making artwork, what can we do next? Um, I think we need to create the dual art service using remote online support and carefully social distant, socially distant studios and projects. So lots of people are already starting all of this. Uh, we need to take the opportunity to design C19 safe exclusive projects, inclusive projects that build resilience and well-being. So exactly like the Gentle Giant projects, we need more of that. And then we need to understand and use the arts to increase global empathy around feeling isolated by listening to everyone's feelings and needs during these uncertain times. Again, the Gentle Giants is the perfect example of that one. So I think there are things that everyone here can do to combat this problem. And just to leave you with this question, well, who decides who's included? And I think people here today have got that power to make those decisions and start further including people in every way possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Alice. Um, so that, that's actually the end of the formal presentations, but you'll notice that one of the running themes in all of our presentations was that, you know, Inclusivity is so much about friendships and community, and it's so much about making just making everyone feel included. And that's why we think that the second segment of our program is, is really important that we, we want to hear from you. We want to hear especially from our gentle giants artists. We want to hear especially from all the artists around the world. Um, yeah, so I hope if you're comfortable that you can put your webcams on and we can all have a have a good conversation together. Um, yeah, but first I'd like to invite Amos to introduce all our lovely partners we've got around the globe with us today. Yes, all right, thank you, Joel. So I won't let this pass because, you know, first I'd like to acknowledge all of the artists who confirmed for this. It's an honor to have with us uh, Guru Alpana Nayak of the Alpana Society and the chief organizer of the Samhap International Conference in Yavi. We also have our co-artists in the Philippines, Carmela Desert, Emily Altindo Santos, Nina Santa Maria, Baha Fajardo, my students and my co-faculty at the UP College of Fine Arts at the University, fellows from the Arts for Good Fellowship uh, that we did in Singapore, of course, hello, and welcoming our friends from the UK. Uh, first, Maria Aller of the Nangha Theatre Company based in Edinburgh one of the pioneering theater companies in the world that has been developing such great talent, diverse ability actors. We also have Karen Anderson, the director of Independent Dance, a leading inclusive dance center that is based in Glasgow. We have Brian Hartley, from Motion UK, such a great artist and uh, written on different mediums and is based in Glasgow. Becky Wade, and a shout out to Jess, Gina and Danny, and the Blue Room artists in Liverpool. Hello there, I, uh, Beck, I, I saw Becky. From Australia, we have Sarah McEwan from the CAD Factory, and I met her when I was in Liverpool. Hello, Sarah. We have Carrie Seeley from the No Strings Theater, uh, Attached Theater of Disability. I was looking for her a while ago. Um, she is also my fellow at the Arts for Good Fellowship in Singapore. From Japan, Hisai and I, a good friend of my artist, uh, co artist Carmela. From India, um, of course, Mira Behera, uh, very nice woman. Uh, I met her in the Somehow 2018. And of course, our partners, I'd like to acknowledge those who are here, Maya Tamaya from the UP Center for Women and Gender Studies, President Josephine Palomares from the Boundless Possibilities Foundation, Professor um, T.B. Belchan Almazan from the uh, uh, President of Art Ventures and Advocacy Network, and Tess de la Cruz uh, uh, the, um, from Northfield Foundation, the Chief of the Program. Thank you.
So let's open the conversation to the floor then. Uh, this is my husband, by the way. <laughs> um, yeah, especially um, any of our gentle giants artists or any of our artists around the world, uh, if, like share anything you've got, like your own experiences of art or with um, inclusivity. Yeah, anything like that. I am um, Talai Achano. I am um, the mother of Budong Gaban. Budong Gaban is a 26-year-old person with autism. So this is my sharing on the experience with um, art journaling. So during the early days of the pandemic, Budong activities were limited to household chores, watching TV, baking, and internet surfing. There were times that he got bored because of prolonged stay at home, which he was not used to. One time during his free time, I asked him to try the coloring books. He was so happy and excited, mixing light colors in the coloring book. Budong started his art online class last June. At first, he was hesitant to join due to his shyness. He seldom talked in a group of people. He was used to engage in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. He would prefer to work on the side inside the class. But when he started to join the online class, he was cooperative and even asserting his own style. He did not even want others to intrude into his work. He ensured that he finished the artwork after the class. He did not want to be late. And through arts, he was given the opportunity to explore his imagination. And there was one art class that teacher Amos asked his students to draw about online platforms. He immediately illustrated his fixation to religious events. There, he drew Sunday masses online. He was able to express himself through arts. There was one art class about virtual travel. Teacher Amos asked them to draw a place which they wanted to visit online in the time of pandemic. Knowing Budong, he is fixated to places. He would spend hours looking at the map and different places in the country. I did not expect that he would that he would draw Manila, which for me a not so special place for a virtual virtual travel. He vividly showed the church with a clock and blue skies, a very happy place, and as if there is no pandemic affecting the whole city. Amidst the pandemic. Budong showed his disposition through his arts by mixing pastel and light colors. He loved to mix those light colors against the dark back background or borders. He has his own style in illustrating persons in his artwork. He would rather do stick drawing and like to draw it in a very light or funny way. And through this means, he was able to manage his anxieties during the quarantine period. And throughout the quarantine period, Budong was just confined to four walls of our very small house. And the reason why I can understand is sometimes feel grumpy and bored. And through arts, he found another means of coping with his anxieties during this crisis. During the art class, Budong would concentrate and he seldom talked. He did not want to be disturbed. As I have observed him from his two months art journaling, he was processing the art themes. He would even search for the Google and look at some ideas and then he started to create his own based on his past experiences and his relationship with family and friends. He created artworks without hesitation. There was one art class with the theme, Unity in Diversity. He immediately drew boys and gays hands together. And to my surprise, I asked him why he did draw that. He said that it can happen. And through his art journaling, I had the chance to discover Budong, the things that he valued, his significant experiences, relationships that he treasured. And as a mother, I now can understand how to deal with this and how to process Budong perceptions about different things or matters in life. Budong experience with art journaling was also a process of discovery. In a way, I get to know her inner thoughts, his inner thoughts, feelings, and, emo and emotions. I cannot thank enough Teacher Amos to provide this rare opportunity to gentle giants. I must say Budong is one of the lucky persons to experience this art class. Thanks to Teacher Amos, Boundless Possibilities Foundation, and other sponsors who made this inclusive arts initiative happen.
Thank you. Thank you so much for your sharing. Uh, would anyone else like to share about their own experiences as well? Yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Emma. I'm, I'm actually uh, would like to share a very personal experience because this um, arts for everyone and this inclusive, inclusive art goes beyond pandemic to me. We've been talking about pandemic. Thank you to the presenters, Joel, Amos, and Alice. And um, why did I say beyond pandemic? because my husband passed away because of this pandemic last April 8th. And my immediate um, reaction was, I have to call Amos on what to do. And in the deepest valley of my life, in the deepest grief of my life, I need someone to hold on for my special son. And I asked, what can we do for Alwyn? Because I myself, I'm struggling. And so can you please help Alwyn? And so that started the one-on-one -on -one with Alwyn and became this bigger group and now became a global group. And I'm so thankful, thankful to uh, everyone, everyone uh, because, of, because of that double whammy I got, it became an opportunity for everyone globally, wherein you have said that, Alice has said that arts is for everyone. And that I have seen also what Joel has, uh, has exhibited uh, the, the works in Singapore that making use of this art through, through fashion, which can be really a fun. Like also to, uh, aside from, um, what was mentioned about expressive and therapeutic, which was, which what's which happened to Alwyn even up up to now, because um, sometimes on some stone uh, I ask Amos Alwyn until now he doesn't know, but um, uh, we're working it on. The so it's it's really it's this is so personal to me, and it became one pandemic and one deep deep grief to become really an opportunity for 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 everyone. I'd like also to mention the high quality um, experience which Alice has, has has said that uh, from the start until now. Alwyn is so excited, even even uh, getting mad if the if the internet is bad. Okay, he gets he, he gets so excited, and um, in fact, the uh, his birthday was the I think first celebration in the General Giants, where he got a lot of gifts, imaginary gifts, which which was one of the products of their collab. Collaboration and cooperation, and after the rounds of galleries that he has uh, done, I said, "Amos, this is not the time. This is the time. Let's not wait after the pandemic to create a vision together with all other artists to really make use of this time digitally because it's it's far more reaching than." The the usual uh, physical meetup, but of course, I would like the physical meetup. But now, let's make use of this opportunity so so that uh, so this uh, day is really for me. I'm so joyful because of all of you all of the parents, all of the supporters, all of the speakers, everyone in this uh, global global um, environment who are this. And yeah, that's, that's, that's my share, my, my point of sharing, my personal, my personal um, journey. And um, from, 
from one single CO use condition to this beautiful, beautiful um, advocacy from every one of you. So I'm so grateful. And all I can say is let's pursue and continue this. This is but the right time. And we have the technology to reach out to everyone, everyone in the world. So good evening to everyone. This is Emma and my son is Alvin, one of the gentle giants. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. It's such a beautiful story as well. And um, I think we've come to the end of our of our um, event. So thank you so much, everyone. It's been so lovely um, having you all here today. Um, please stick around if you've got questions for you know um, Amos, Alice, and myself. Um, if not, then. Thank you, thank you so much. But you're very welcome to stick around if you've got questions or you'd like to speak to any of us. <laughs>